So let's see, raise your hands if you think the WordPress dashboard is a really cool, streamlined, modern and fresh place to be. Go on, I'll wait. Yeah, I didn't think so. So I think we can all probably agree that the admin interface for WordPress is a little bit left unloved. And I've covered this in multiple different videos. So I've shown you different tools to allow you to customize the whole look and feel. One of those tools a couple of years back was Admin 2020, which was renamed to UiPress. Well, today we're gonna to take a look at the beta version of UiPress version three. Why are we looking at this? Because I think this is going to change the way in which you may want to take a look at approaching customizing the WordPress dashboard. Dashboard. Imagine a page builder, but for your dashboard. That's what we're going to take a look at today. Now, there's a ton of things to cover, and this is not a tutorial. This is just a very quick, brief overview so I can show you what types of things you can do, what's included, and how it actually works. Logging into the WordPress dashboard, this is what you're greeted with, something we've been looking at for a very long time time. It does the job, but it's not the most inspiring or exciting place to be. Now, once you've gone ahead and installed the beta version or the final version, if you're watching this a little later down the line, all you need to do is come into the settings section and into UI Builder. That will open up and list any of the templates that you've created. Now, I have one starter template we can play about with. And the nice thing with this is you can set up different templates for different roles, different users, all manner of different things. So you can customize this in any way you want and then make it available in whatever format to anybody you want to. So this is a custom template that I've set up. Currently it's in draft mode, but it's only available for administrators and super admins. So let's go ahead and activate it and see what we have. So just taking a look at the refreshed version and it already looks a little bit more clean, a little bit more modern and totally not like WordPress. You can switch between light and dark modes if you want to enable this feature and you can see the dark mode does look really nice. However, it's worth bearing in mind that not all plugins will adhere to the standards that make working with dark mode a nice place to be. You'll find things like, for example, if we take a look at something like advanced custom fields, it doesn't look great in dark mode. However, switching it over into the light mode, it does look pretty nice inside there. So you're gonna have to modify things or at this point in time, wait until some of these catch up or customize them yourself. The other thing you may notice is even though we've got the same kind of setup on the left hand side for the main navigation, it operates differently. Normally, whenever you go in and you open up any of these sections inside WordPress, it loads and refreshes the page. This doesn't do it that way. This uses Ajax to asynchronously load the data in so you don't get that page load. So if you've got a decent connection, you should notice the things are just a little bit smoother, a little bit more fresh and modern compared to what you're used to. And you can see we can just jump back in, but you can control that. If you don't want that to be the case, you can switch it between different kinds of modes, no problem at all. So let's go back into our settings, open up our UI builder one more time. And this time let's go ahead and open up the template to take a look at how this works. Now, when you come in here, this is gonna look a lot more like a page builder that you used to, things like Elementor, Bricks, those kinds of tools. Let's go and make this full screen just so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on, a bit more real estate. And you can see we're looking at a kind of templated section for our main dashboard homepage. Our navigation block on the left-hand side, navigation at the top, and our main dashboard area. And we can click and come into any of these sections to customize anything we want. So for example, you come into all posts, you can see this will list what the all posts looks like, and then we can customize various aspects of this. And again, we can still switch between dark mode and light mode inside you as well. So when these are selected, you'll notice that when you hover over various different things, you'll get these little pop-outs appear. These allow you to customize the various different parts of it. So let's come back out of here, go back to our main dashboard, go to home, for example. So we've got a cleaner interface to work with. So now if we come over, for example, the top section and click, you can see this gives us now a kind of hierarchy of all the various different components inside this section. Your body, body container, toolbar container, and so on. We can go ahead and we can click on the little settings and that will open up the settings on the right hand side, at which point we can open these up and you can see you can customize aspects of this. You can go ahead and set this to be hidden on different devices so you can customize the look and feel and the features that are available, whether you're on a mobile, a tablet, or a desktop. You can also switch between those designs by using the option at the top. So when you do start to customize things, you can see what they're going to look like.
Now this kind of leads me on to the first thing that I'm not really a fan of, and that is the way that when you hover over these, you do get these little sort of pop-out features. To me, I would rather see these options just docked on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, whichever you want to do it, just so the settings are in a standard location and are easy to get access to. This sort of hover setup, while it's not particularly difficult to work with, I don't really like it. It kind of feels a bit cluttered and in the way. But apart from that, it's functional, it does the job. Like I say, if we click to open up any of these options, we can expand these and inside there, we've got things like we can create our own custom tool tips. We can show and hide them. We can add comments in. We can go to the block container itself. We can come into our styles. We can change the colors inside here if we want to. And you've got a full options for theme variables so you can create your own CSS variables for your colors and so on. You've got gradients inside here as well. You've got global colors, so you can set up your global color scheme. So if you want to customize this to be perfectly in keeping with a brand, it can all be done. So there's an abundance of options inside here, right the way down to things like your toolbar icons, the background colors, your font sizes. You know, you've got control over pretty much every aspect. You can get rid of things if you don't want them. So for example, you may not want to have the switch for your dark and light mode. You can select it. And you can come over and you can see you've got dark mode. Well, we can simply go ahead, hit the trash can on that. And that's now been removed from the interface. If we save this template and we come back into our dashboard, we'll see now that dark mode option has been removed. So we can't use it anymore. And if you want to put it back or you want to add it in, you can simply come over to the option on the right hand side. And from there, we can just do a search for dark mode. There's our dark mode and we can simply just drag that back to where we want it to be. Pop it inside there and you see how dark mode is back in there. It is as simple as that. It's drag and drop. So it's very easy to kind of work with. Now it is at times a little bit clunky. You know, you I think you do need to take a little bit of time to get used to how this all works. But you can see there's an abundance of options, even in the free, I know this is the beta version, but even in the free version, you can see there's a lot of what you can do inside you. So for example, let's say we wanted to create like a to-do list and we wanted that to pop out from the right-hand side when we click a button. Let's go ahead and do something like that. Let's come down to our layout. Let's grab a slide out panel. Now I'm not gonna worry too much about this looking great. I just wanna show you how you can kind of build the functionality. So there's your press me button. We can click that will open up the side panel. So now that we have our sidebar enabled, let's say we want to add in our to-do list. Let's drag that inside there. There's our to-do list. And now we've got a custom to-do list. If you wanna make changes to that, we can select it. There's all the options inside here the advanced options. So if you want to add a custom class in and you want to get into custom CSS and custom JavaScript to take this even further than what the plugin itself actually allows you to do, you have those options built in. So let's come back out of this and let's just give it a test. Let's save this. Let's come back over and refresh. There's our press me button. We'll click. That opens things up. We now have a to-do list. So let's go and add a to-do list. We'll hit enter or return and we've added that in. We come into to-do. We'll add that. We'll come to to-do, we'll come to completed. You can see that'll show us the various different states. Once we finish that, we'll click on it. That will now update, come to completed, go into to-do. You can see we created a to-do list inside here. We can just close that down and we've customized this. We've got a dark mode, we can switch that on if we want to. We can open this up and you can see that picks up the dark mode options. If you want to change the color scheme inside you, you can do that by simply coming in, going into the settings section. And inside there, we've got theme styles. We open that up and you can see we can create new variables or we can target the light or the dark modes. And you see each one of these will change the color palette we have to be in keeping. And if you want to change colors inside here, you can simply click to change the color, choose the color value that you want. Boom, job done. And then you can do that, create your own full custom styles. Now, when you're working with creating your design, sometimes it can kind of be a bit confusing what's going on and you may want to have a different way of viewing things. Well, this is where you've got the option for your layers. And this will now show you a hierarchical view in the same way that the Navigator does in a tool like Elementor. So you will see we can expand any of these out and find the components that are making up each and every part of this. So you can see there's our container inside our containers, our heading, our paragraph, another container inside there. So our view site, our logout, so that's our options on the, the left-hand side. Our dark mode, our body container, our to-do list, our slide-out panel. And when we select any of those, we can adjust any of the settings in both light mode and dark mode. So there's a lot of ways in which you can interact with this particular setup. You can disable that just by clicking the option, and we can close this down by clicking and 
coming back out. So you can easily come in and customize all of this if you want to. You can use any kind of method to get access to it, change your colors, change the layout. You've also got things like, for example, if we come over to the left hand side where we've got all the navigation, let's select that container. Let's select our admin menu and select it from there. Come to our block options and you can see we can switch between different menu styles. So we can currently use in the dynamic option. But if we set this to hover, so let's save that template jump back out of here and refresh our page. And you see now we don't have the same as we had before. We now have this sort of hover. When we go over, you can see there's the sub menus inside there and we can just simply come over and select the option. So you can change this. If you want to come back to inline and save the template one more time, this is going to operate exactly the same as we used to have with the standard way of working with WordPress itself. So for example, if we come into posts, click, that'll show us all the subsections underneath it, come into pages, same kind of thing happens there. So you can customize this to get how you want the way things work, your menu direction. You can come in and adjust the various different order. So you can disable various different things, change colors, icons, rename things. So if you didn't want dashboard, for example, you could rename that and we'll call this Wibble Space. I don't know why, but we will. And you can see that now updates to Wibble Space. We'll save our template, come back out, refresh. And no longer we have dashboard, we have a Wibble space. And who doesn't want a Wibble space? Don't ask me, it's been a long day. But hopefully you can see how you could use this to build up customized things. And like I say, this is just really scratching the surface of what could be done. There are still some quirks inside you because this is still a beta product. There's some things that I would like to see streamlined and kind of just made a little easier. But other than that, I think when this starts to mature, if you are looking for a way to have pretty much the ultimate control over how your dashboard in WordPress is going to look. This is a pretty good option and something you may want to take a look at considering. But that's basically what I want to cover in this video. As always, I welcome your feedback, your comments, your questions, and everything else. Drop those in the comment section below. All applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. Until next time, take care.